Corel Photo Paint comes with an array of effects which can be applied to an image or object. And new to Photo Paint 2020 are non destructive effects, which make it easy to apply, modify, combine, and experiment with effects on an object or image while keeping original objects intact. Before we get started, if you're watching this video on YouTube, you'll find a link in the description below that will take you to our tutorial page on Corel's Discovery Center. Here you can also download a written copy of this tutorial. I'm starting with this photo object as the base for my composition. The other objects in the composition, which I'll unhide one by one, are a translucent blue overlay on the wall, then a translucent paint splatter object, and above them all is another copy of the man in the photo. I'll hide the top three objects again and focus on the photo, which is now selected. Like in previous versions of Photo Paint, there are a wealth of effects in the Effects menu. To try one, I'll choose Effects, Camera, Colorize. Preview is checked so that I can see changes in real time. I'll choose a red hue with medium saturation and click OK. As in previous versions, applying an effect from the Effects menu changes the object to which it's applied. But new to Photo Paint 2020 is the Effects Inspector from which I can apply one or more non-destructive effects. This means that I can add as many effects as I want, or turn effects on and off, and original objects always remain intact. I can also edit effects after they're applied, and change the order of combined effects. I'll undo the colorize effect. The photo is still selected, and I'll open the effects inspector. Clicking the plus sign in this inspector opens a menu that has all of the effects from the effects menu, as well as all of the Adjust options. I'll start with Camera, Colorize, as before, and apply a dramatic purple color change. The effect is now listed in the inspector. I'll also add an Art Strokes watercolor effect with low settings for each option. This effect was applied to both the photo itself and to the previous color effect I applied before. Either effect can be toggled off and on when I hover over it and click the eye icon. To adjust an effect, I can double click on it or click its edit icon. For the colorize effect, I can try a different color, which changes the look of both effects. I can edit the watercolor effect to have higher brush size, granulation, and bleed. I could also delete a selected effect with the delete icon or combine effects with the flatten icon. Keep in mind that once a set of effects are flattened, they become destructive. This means that any edits applied after this would be applied to the object with the flattened effects, not the original object. I can also drag effects to reorder them. This is how the photo would look if the watercolor style had been applied first, then the colorizing. Back in the Objects Inspector, I'll turn the Wall Overlay back on and select it. In the Effects Inspector, I'll add a Texture Brick Wall effect and adjust the brick size and roughness. This effect is applied only to the overlay, so the bricks stop at the floor. I'll turn on the splatter object, which is translucent, so the objects below and their effects show through a bit. I'll now display and select the man and return to the effects inspector. The effect I'll add now is blur, motion blur, which again is applied only to the selected object. In the Objects Inspector, the three objects that have effects now have the FX icon. Clicking this icon toggles off all effects applied to that object and brings back the intact original objects. And now I have the flexibility to see which effects to keep and which to hide. This brings us to the end of this tutorial on effects in Corel Photo Paint. If you've been watching this video on YouTube, you'll find a link in the description below that will take you to our tutorial page on Corel's Discovery Center. Here you can also download a written copy of this tutorial.